In your most recent news, Steve, you say our lead products have delivered the strong growth we forecasted for 2022. I have to say congratulations. Where to start? Uh, thank you very much, Tracy. Um, yes, we put out guidance uh, earlier this week uh, for the fourth quarter. Uh, our previous guidance was 11 million. We've now upped that to 12 and a half to 13 million. Our fourth quarter did end October 31st. So we have fairly high level of confidence that when all the numbers are tabulated, that that's where the revenues will be. And again, it's a combination there of uh, our existing products, our asthma therapies that are, are growing, uh, Redesca, which is doing well, our blood thinner, um, and then the three new products that we license at the end of July, two of which are ophthalmic products or products for specific eye condi <laughs> excuse me, conditions, and the uh, third product being a um, a product for severe allergy called Allergect. And I, I happen to have a, a little uh, product right here. And it's uh, we have high expectations uh, for this product uh, as we do for all our products. And, and that's why the guidance went up. So let me back you up for a second. If you read the most recent news release, I'm so happy you could fit us in. Uh, you raised your Q4, but you also raised your full year 2022 revenue guidance. That's correct. So respectfully, you told everybody here on Investor Intel you were going to do it, and you've done it. So let's talk about your fiscal 22 revenue guidance being increased. Give us maybe a couple of the high points. You know, what, It's always nice to compare to prior periods. Uh, it gives a point of reference. And uh, if you look at our fiscal 21, we came in around 13.6. Fiscal 22, we're coming in 100% higher. Uh, so we, we have to be happy about that. But as I, I say to our colleagues uh, at uh, at Valio, uh, happiness lasts a few minutes and you, you can't sit on your laurels. We have to continue moving forward and drive revenues even higher for 2023. Uh, but again, key products are delivering. We have six, we have a dozen products in total that we commercialize, but six of which we put significant marketing and, and sales efforts behind. Um, and those products are all growing at different rates, but they are all growing. So we're a diversified portfolio, a, before, a portfolio that has quite a bit of upside past where we are now. Uh, when we do present uh, to various bankers and what have you, we talk about having revenue potential over 200 million with the products that we have now. Now, it's going to take several years to get to that level, but it gives you a a sense of the the uh, the amplitude or the, the growth that can come from some of our products. And that's the products we currently have, not talking about anything else that might be in the pipeline. So further to your exceeding 100% compared to fiscal 2021, uh, money doesn't seem to be enough for shareholders. Let's talk about the lives you're saving. Well, there's a, we're changing a lot of lives. And the first part, if I talk about internally, uh, if going back 24 months, we were 25 employees. We're now over 125 employees. So we're very proud of building that, building a Canadian-owned pharma company that's employing Canadians and that's doing good for patients and for physicians. And if we look at, we talk about those, those, uh, those stakeholders, patients and physicians, we have a number of therapies that are, are doing quite well, but one in particular, and this is it here, Enerzair. This is one of the most advanced asthma therapies, on inhaled asthma therapies on the market today, destined for moderate to severe asthmatics. And you're looking at about a million Canadians that do suffer uh, where, uh, from asthma to the extent that they need to take their medication daily. I'm not talking about those that need rescue medications or have asthma symptoms from time to time. We're talking about people that on a daily basis need medication to be able to, to function during the day. A million Canadians. The statistics show that over half of these Canadians are not satisfied with their current therapy. So when you bring in a, a new drug like this, newly launched by us, just approved by Health Canada a year and a half ago, which showed in clinical trials conducted by Novartis, significantly better results than the existing standard of care. It gives us a, a, a strong platform to reach out to physicians and to people who do suffer from asthma to say, if your symptoms are not under control, you should consider Ender's Air. It's done very well. And the anecdotal evidence we're getting back is very strong. People, comments are, I, I wish I would have been on this drug years ago. I can sleep through the night. I can uh, climb stairs. I can exercise without worrying about my asthma. This, these are, are, this is, you know, Suffer, for those who do suffer from asthma, it really uh, reduces their quality of life. And anything we can do to improve someone's quality of life, 
reduce their symptoms. I think we're doing good for our everyone, shareholders, employees, and and most and for first and foremost for the patients who do suffer. So life changing is how you would describe it. I said life savings, uh, but perhaps it's because being familiar with you know, for instance, as asthmatics, uh, if they don't have their medication close by, it can become quite dangerous. Is that not correct? That's correct. Uh, every year, there's 70,000 plus uh, Canadians that end up in, in the emergency room uh, needing oxygen because there are asthma symptoms. And asthma symptoms can be things such as lung function, uh, tightness in the chest, wheezing, coughing. But it's almost like they come to a crescendo uh, where the where the pay, uh, where the uh, the uh, sufferer uh, has to seek uh, hospital help. And uh, uh, another aspect of the clinical trials on Enters Air, where it significantly reduced the number of so-called exacerbations or asthma attacks. So this is important for people who suffer from asthma, and, and our. You know, our our calling is to get out there and and talk to physicians, and we we cu- currently uh, access about twelve thousand physicians in Canada. The, this is our target base for our sales team to go out there and and demonstrate the clinical lab or show the clinical evidence that supports that and get them to use this product. And we think it has a lot of benefits, as I mentioned, to people who are currently not satisfied or have issues with their current standard of care. I just want to say congratulations again. And one last question. I was talking to your investor relations, head of your uh, head of IR for Vallejo, and I was asking him, what question do you wish investors would ask Steve when you set up these meetings with him? What what do you want people to ask Steve? Well, I think uh, the the question that that people sometimes uh, don't uh, ask is. Um, you know, where are you going in the future? Like you, the company is at a point in time today, but that point in time in, in a day uh, you've passed that point in time. So what is your ambition for this company? Where do you see it in, in three to five years? And clearly what we said two years ago, uh, if we r- wind back your show and, and see the early episodes, we want to be one of the premier mid-tier Canadian pharma companies, mid-tier being not a multinational, uh, but certainly providing strong uh, benefits to our shareholders and to and to patients, uh, and I guess a lot of people are more fixated on well, uh, what's your last quarter look like? So it's it's more of a, a shorter term vision. Um, I think when you look at Valio and you look at long term, you can really get excited about this company. And the other thing I like is, you know, everything that we do not make predictions. We talk about what we expect for the future and what we aspire to. But if you look back, I think a lot of what we've talked about in terms of aspiring to we've actually accomplished and i think that sets a good track record for us saying these you know we're on the right track we're doing things it never works out exactly you've got covid that hits you and affects the way physicians interact with patients and sale you've got other uh, uh inflation you've got higher interest rates but the reality we've done a lot of what we said we were going to do and we continue to believe we're going to be one of the premier uh canadian pharma companies so i would just say to those that are not shareholders they Keep an eye on us, and uh, hopefully, at some point in the future, you'll you'll feel uh, inclined to uh, to become a shareholder of Alio and uh, to participate in our uh, what is going to be an ex- what's been an exciting and will continue to be an exciting future. Well, you've just given me some very good ideas, Steve. As always, it's such a pleasure. Thank you so much for your update today. Great to yeah, great, great being here, and we'll see you again soon.